word for name, Kumbu, it's very, very close with Kembu, Kembu, which means glory. Yes, glory. Uh, so Kombo in the Bantu Lingala is the word for name. And then we have Kembo is the word for glory. And this last word, Kembo, signifies a heaviness. Yes, a heaviness. So when you think on glory, glory is something that had a weight on it, a heaviness. Yeah. So your name is measurable. <laughs> we can measure your name in the spiritual ranking. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes. yes sir. It's crazy, yeah. So we can actually measure your name in the spiritual ranking because it has a weight to it. And that weight is called glory. That's why certain spirit entities can be afraid when your name is mentioned. Because in the spiritual ranking, your name is much heavier, carries more glory, is to say, more authority and power than what they possess. So when they hear your name, they are scared. Am I talking sense? Yes, sir. Yes, am I? Yes. yes. Absolutely, yes. it makes perfect sense. Hallelujah. That's why they changed our names when they took us into slavery. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So you see the importance of your name, yes? Your name is very important. Let's go to Genesis 5. Now let's read. Um, okay, we will read from here, okay, and one and two, is there someone who wants to read for us, first one and two? This is the book of the generations of Adam, in the day that Satan Zambi created man, in the likeness of Elohim. He made him male and female. He created them and blessed them and called their name Adam the day <laughs> that. when they were created. Hallelujah. See, so let's break down first one and then we'll jump to first two. Now, this is the book of the generations. Yeah. Now, generation signifies a genealogy, right? And there is a spiritual genealogy. There's not only a physical genealogy of DNA. There exists a spiritual genealogy. And it is hidden. For example, when you go to Genesis 2, this is a hidden thing, eh? No one talks about it really, uh, but it's a hidden thing, okay? Brother, can you read? Can someone read first two? These are the general, verse two, and on the seventh day. Oh, sorry, first four, the, first four. Verse four, okay. Yes. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In in day. Okay. You see? So these are the generations of Zulu, Samaim, the heavens, the waters, the world. Yes, because remember that the world existed before in yeah, in the universe of waters. Yes, that universe of water is actually the um, ancient primordial world. It existed before this world, okay? 
So the Bible tells us that there is a generation of the heavens. Now, how can heavens have a generation? How is that possible? How can heaven have a generation? Unless our ancestors were not crazy when they said the world existed before this world. Because this world is a restoration of the ancient world that was destroyed. Mm. That's the, what our ancestors said. But the Kadian Pemba, in the Christian theologies that they made up, mm -hmm. told us and taught us that when you read the book of Genesis, that's the creation, that's the beginning of everything. No. That's not correct. Yes, that's not correct. The Tanzambi does not create uh, chaos. You know, he's not the author of chaos, of this order. And so why is there chaos and disorder in Genesis 1, verse 2? Because the world existed before. That's why when scientists tell you that the, the, the universe or the planet Earth is billions of years old, Christians have a problem with it because it doesn't fit in their theology. <laughs> but our ancestors understood very well that the world is very old. And the only thing that Tanzambi did was uh, restore the fallen world. So in essence, we have three worlds that will be made manifest. We had the ancient world that fell. We have the current world and we have the world to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? So <clears throat> So when the Heaven and earth were created. Yes. There was a generation. A generation. Now, let's go, you know, and maybe you think I'm just uh, making things up. But when we go into the Strong's Concordance and we study the word Toldot or Toledo. It says the following descendants, yes, genealogies, account of man and their descendants, Geneal genealogical list of one's descendants, etc. Also, history. Look how they put it here. Yes, his course of history of creation. <clears throat> now, it has to do with begetting, yes, producing, yes, begetting something. Meta, uh, physically, yes, metaphysically, it is used of the heaven and earth, metaphysically, yes. So, who birthed the heavens, who birthed the genealogy, the creatures of heavens and earth. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Um, Strong's definition, descend, see? Descend is to say a family, yes? a family or figuratively the history of a family. Yes, what we can also say, kinkulu, the history of the ancestors, the history of the family. Hmm? Yeah. So heaven and earth shares one family, one family. You understand? For, let me give you an example. You have your mother with you, yes? Your parents, they are alive and well. 
will they cease to be your mother or father when they die? Huh? No. So yeah. that means you have two genealogy, one living in the beyond, what we know as heaven, right? In Christian concepts, heaven, and the other living on the earth. Am I making sense? Perfectly. Okay. Make perfect sense, Nabi, perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Because in Christianity, what they say, when you die, you die. You, you don't exist any longer. They don't want you to reconnect. You're gone, right? You're gone, You're gone forever. Every tie is broken. No. No. But spirits existed. Yes, spirits existed. And there are different kinds of spirits. We can say that they are uh, tribes of spirits, just to give you a better understanding of it. There are tribes of spirits, yes? Different kinds of spiritual families that exist together, all right? <clears throat> now, as you are birthed on the earth, you are, incarnating in a temporal body to perform to pre, yeah to, to perform certain works yes and through those works to gain your reward when you return all right but you are born in a bloodline you are born in a family you are born in a culture And it's not by accident, you know, it's not by accident like, whoa, I'm just born in a white family or I'm born in a mixed race family or I'm born, you know, in, in an Indian family. No, it's determined by the judges, you know, before you come, you enter a physical body as you're you know, growing in the womb before you can come to incarnate, to inhabit a temporal body and to walk and work and live on this temporal plane, you will stand before the judges, okay? The judges also known as the gods. Now, when I say the gods, for many Christian alarm bells goes off. Oh, he said the gods, heathen, pagan, right? Paganism. No, it's not paganism. <laughs> Elohim, what you read oh, is plural. Yeah? The Hebrew word Elohim, and you are in church singing Elohim, Elohim. You are saying the gods. Yes. The singular is uh, Elah or Eli. That's the singular, Elohim is plural, the God. So in the beginning, the gods created Muntu in their likeness. Yes, in their likeness, in the image, the gods created Muntu. Because creation itself is not an act of just one person. Yes, it's not the act of just one person. Even the Bible tells you that in creation, multiple deities were involved. All right? I lost you, eh? I lost you. Oh, I lost you. <laughs> Let me explain. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I see that I lost you guys. Let me explain. Wow. In the beginning was the word, and the word was by whom? God, right? You know the scripture. In the beginning was the word, and the word was by God, and the word was God. And through the word, he did what? Created. So he used the word to create. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So 
the one who spoke and the word that came out of his mouth were the ones creating. Yes. In that you see the feminine and the male energies working together to create. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual principle. Okay. You, you need to forget about uh, uh, the Father, Father, and Holy Spirit also being all males, right? That's a, that's an error of Christianity. Mm, yes. Um, that's why they are the, the first church, yeah, the Roman church, they were pedophiles, right? That they were homosexuals, okay? How can you have gods of creation and they are all males? And when they needed a son, they used Mary as a, as, 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 as a carrier. Yeah. Mm. You see the corruption there. Mm -hmm. The father, male. The son, male. The Holy Spirit, male. And when they wanted to have a child, they used Mary to be <laughs> the carrier for a child. <laughs> Well, see how insane it is, right? Mm -hmm. So homosexuals now are using scripture mm. to defend their position. Mm. <laughs> no. Nature is the perfect shadow eh, of mirror of the spiritual reality how the spiritual world works because the physical world is modeled after the spiritual world mm -hmm. you understand the physical world that we see and touch and experience is modeled after the what spiritual world okay, everything even the temple Yes, is modeled after the spiritual. To really uh, liberate yourself, uh, you must renew your mind. You must forget what you thought you knew eh? and relearn everything. So the greatest challenge for us now is to forget and to relearn. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge for many people because you don't want to forget. You think what I know, that's the truth. Yeah, what I know. Yes, what you know with a Christian dogma still polluting your reasoning. Mm -hmm will still not bring you into you know, the state of full illumination. You have to empty your glass. Now, for example, if you have something filthy in your glass, yes, and you pour it out, but you keep the half to the half in it and you pour in fresh water, what will happen? You will still mangle dirty water with clean yeah. water. The best thing to do is to pour everything out. Yes? And, mix in the and whole then thing. to receive the new wine. Okay? Mm -hmm. the new water. And when you drink it, you will feel a difference. Yes? You will feel a difference. That will bring you total deliverance from Kadiyan Pembalais, indoctrination, half-truths, manipulations of scriptures, mm -hmm. etc. All right, now look at this. <clears throat> oh, Hebrew, Hebrew 12, man. <laughs> uh, let me go to Hebrews 12. <clears throat> okay, uh, what did I say? I said Hebrews, right? Hebrews, yes, Hebrews 12. 
Now, <clears throat> first of all, you are never alone. With us, we are always surrounded. And when you become conscious of that cloud of witnesses that surround you, yeah, which goes back to um, the generations of heaven and earth. Yes, because they are people alive in the beyond from your bloodline. And they are people from that same bloodline alive on the earth. Remember that Isaiah took on the blood, yes, of Muntu. You understand? He entered into the bloodline of Muntu to be one of them. That's what scripture says. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, now let us go on back. Okay, now here, through faith, we understand that the world's plural, as you can see, the world's plural, <laughs> were framed by the word. Yes, framed by the word. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So the physical world was modeled after the spiritual world. Yeah. So when you look into nature and you study nature, it's a perfect mirror on how things are in the spirit. The generations of Adam, yes, the generation starts spiritually in the spirit world and then enters physically in the bloodline. And they were created in the day yeah, that God and Zambi created them in the likeness. Yeah? So Muntu means the likeness of the divine, the likeness of the gods. Yes, the likeness. <clears throat> That's Muntu. Muntu can also denote one who possesses the power. Yes, because the word to can also uh, refer to a power. Yes, possessing an energy. Muntu is one who is the likeness of the Most High and one who possesses the power of the spirit world. Yes, that's Muntu. Now, he created them male and female. You see, feminine energy, the masculine energy, when they come together, there is a fusion. And from that fusion, new life is birthed. You understand? The masculine energy releases the seed in the waters, okay? The waters, Mai, which is called heavens, yeah, receives that seed, which is also the Logos. You see the spiritual parallels? They are the same. They are the same. So the masculine energy releases the seed, the logos, into the sphere, atmosphere of waters, which is the womb, the world. The waters now receive that seed, which is logos, 
incubates it, and births new life. Hallelujah. As it is in the natural, it is in the spirit. And he blessed them. Now, blessing here is the empowerment to succeed and to fulfill your destiny. Yes, blessing. That's the empowerment to exceed in your mandate, your mission, whatever you are to do. Yes. And to fulfill your destiny. That's the blessing. Yeah. So he blessed them. And then he called their name Adam. In that word Mwanda, we see Mwana. Right, you can also uh, we see the word Moana, yeah, Moana, like this or like that, Moana, which means one who is a child, yes, one who is a child, Moana, and in that same word, this word, let me. Uh, in that same word, we also see the word, the word Andan, or Adan, sorry, Adan, which is Adam. Yes, Adam. So in Mwanda, the word for spirit, one of the Bantu languages, Kikongo, Mwanda, we see Mwana, we see Adan, and uh, the Latin word Anda which means to walk. So Muntu, the one who is called Adam, he named them. Yeah, okay, let's, let's go back. He called them, yeah, so that is naming. He named them Adam. Yes. He named them. <laughs> Ooh. Adam. Yeah, now. He named them in the essence, yes, in the essence. He said that word, that word Adam means a child who walks with the spirit. See that? So that's the reason I said the moon too is a naturally spiritual being. When he called the ancient, ancient ancestors, Adam, he said, this is a child who will possess and walk with the spirit. Yes. So you originally, you were created spirit filled. Yeah. Now you have to go to church <laughs> to be spirit filled, to receive eh? the hand of a bishop upon your head, moving your head around, pushing you back. Mm -hmm. hitting your heart on your head just to fall. And then they say, receive, receive, be filled with the spirit. Okay? And then as you leave church, you go for the game, but you receive the spirit. <clears throat> right? Adam was spirit filled. He was a child filled with the spirit walked after the spirit yeah now let me show you something and i will put my spirit within you muanda to become a child that walks after the spirit and cause you you see cause you to walk see that oh my goodness do you see it and cause you to walk. That's why he named them Adam, to signify this 
children will walk after the spirit. And by walking after the spirit, they will live in accordance with my statutes and laws. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Okay. Now let's continue. Now, <clears throat> in Bantu tradition, which is biblical tradition, when a child is born, uh, there have to be a ceremony of naming the child. Okay, when it's a male child, the naming happens by circumcision. Okay, it, it, it may differ from here and there, you know, from different Bantu tribes, but originally, the ancient times, as a male child was born, the child was circumcised and the name was spoken over the child. The name was revealed, yes? And the revealing of the name was, now nah, we will come there, yeah? So when the child was born, uh, there was a ceremony of naming. The child, if it's a male, will be circumcised and the name revealed, okay? Now, the parents were the ones to name the child, but also the elders could name the child, yes? The elders being the grandfathers and mothers, yeah? and also the angelic ancestors can name the child, you see? So we have three groups of people who can name the child. The parents, the elders, and the angelic ancestors. One, for example, can have a dream, yes? And in the dream, your soul travels into the ethereal realm, into the realms of dreams, where you can entertain spirits, yes? And angels descend, you have a conversation. And, you know, in our context, it's an angelic ancestor. So one of your spiritual bloodlines, one who lived but now lives in the beyond, returns. It can be your great, great grandfather, great, 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 great grandmother, and tells you this child should be named James Fula. <laughs> eh? But Yakuba. Don't, don't say James, Pemba, but say Yakuba. This child must be named Yakuba because it will do such and such and such in his life. And you wake up, you tell the family, oh, uh, the ancestors appeared to me in my dream. In Christianity, angels, right? Angels appeared in my dream and they told me that I should name the child with this name. Now the family, we will pray, you know, and there will be a confer confer uh, confirmation and the child will receive the name. Yes, so that's the way it was. It had always been. And that, that's the way it's supposed to be. So we have the parents, the elders, and the angelic ancestors who can name a child uh, when a child is birthed. Now, a child, a moon to a child, Moana, yes, a Moana, a child becomes a complete moon to when he or she receives a name, yeah? So conception takes place. The word is released. It enters into the waters. The rather receive the word, which is the seed, the logos, incubates it, 
and brings forth a new life. Tanzambe formed the blood, shaped the body, the human structure, yes, the soul entered and dwelled and connected itself with the blood. Now the child is released into the world. But the child is not complete because it lacks a name. Yeah? So to seal a child in their journey, you know, as they start their journey, they have to receive their proper name. And that name must be received by a revelation, you know, by prayer, by meditation. Because that child is coming to do something, to perform something on this temporal plane. Yeah. So you cannot just go and buy a baby book with names. <laughs> uh, Brother Silverback. <laughs> Be careful, you're gonna get in trouble, man. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like that. It's like that, you know. We never had, you know, baby <laughs> books with names, eh? popular name. No, the name came from the spiritual realm, and the names were names in the family. You know, it was improper to name your child with a different name that does not uh, pre-exist in your family, yes, among your kin. Mm -hmm. It was very strange. If that name, no one in your family carries that name, it's very strange to name your child with a foreign name. You break the line with the ancestors. Okay, when you do that, names remain in the family. Why? Because our ancestors believed that the spirits eh, yes. could be reincarnated in the family, in the kanda. Eh? That's why names continue to exist in the family and also the extended family. The angel told Zacharias, right? You will name this child John Yokana. Mm -hmm. He said, no one in our family carries that name. <laughs> and the angel said, shut up, obey. Name this son. Yokana, because it has to do with his mission. Now, according to the Bakongo beliefs, and the beliefs of the Bakongo, the name is an extension of human essence. Yes, of the human essence, as is the shadow. As the name is connected, uh, as the name and shadow are human essence, both of them are also connected with soul and spirit. Okay? Both of them are connected with soul and spirit. Okay. Now, in your lifetime, and as you go through phases, through the phases of life, there will be three occasions where you receive a name. Yes, there will be three occasions where you receive a name. First, is that you receive a name at birth. Yeah, so that's your birth name. Then you have the name, the initiation name, right? Then 
you have the resurrection name. Okay, so there will be three occasions in which you will receive different names. Your birth name, initiation name, and resurrection name. For example, in the Bible, one of the fathers was called Abram. That was his birth name, according to the biblical story. Eh? In the Kikongo, Lingala, in the Bantu, it's uh, different here and there. But, and some even don't believe that there was an Abraham. Yes, they don't believe, it's all made up, okay? But if you stick with the um, biblical narrative, his birth name was Abram. And when he was initiated by the Most High to be part of his circle, inner circle, he changed his name. He said, you will no longer be called Abram, but Abraham. Biblical story, okay? So his name, his birth name was changed when Tatum Zambi initiated him to be part of his inner circle, to be his friend, yes? Part of his inner circle, part of his council. Council Zulu, so he changed his name. And by changing his name, he also changed his destiny, okay? His destiny changed. And then we have the resurrection name. When you resurrect in the beyond, you will also receive a different name. Mm -hmm.